democracy is in decline. That, alas, was the sad message that emerged from the first day of talks here at the World Forum for Democracy in Strasbourg. Today, the second day is much more optimistic. Democratic renewal is the key term. Politicians, academics and activists got together and held discussions and presented initiatives on how to achieve this. No less than 10 workshops and eight forum talks explored how citizens around the world can take control of their own destiny. Education, history, and technological tools are all the ways that people can do this. Let's discover what went on at the forum today. Uh, youth engagement when it comes to uh, democratic processes and uh, political systems is almost absent. So the role of the youth today is very important. It's true that they are the youth, the, the, the future of, of our country, the future of the world, but they are also today present and they can have a voice. They need to understand how powerful their voice can be. You can start small, you can uh, start by discussing it in your friend group, you can uh, discuss it uh, in your student association, for example. One of the key elements for the, for the development of the youth to become decision makers and to make a change and an impact in their societies is to be well equipped with the skills and knowledge they need. And this is going to happen through education and training. We need education so we can empower ourselves and we can fight for human rights. We can fight for all the young people around the world. Uh, to have better life conditions as well and to have access to all these human rights that have not been respected at all. One of today's conclusions was that empowering young people via education can put them very firmly on the road towards building a new form of democracy. But to achieve that, they need tools. In a changing world order, when the technologies are very much accessible for nearly everyone and everyone is connected to internet, there is a lot of space to redefine the concepts that what is democracy should be redefined and to naturally to pass on to new generations, to accept it as a new norm and to pass to new forms of realization of democracy. So this initiative is mainly focused on people power. Uh, mainly aimed at educating people of their rights as contained in the Bill of Rights of the Zimbabwean Constitution and we're trying to do this in uh, local languages so that people would be able to know what their rights are and part of the, co of the social contract, what they are entitled to and also get assistance in the instance that their rights are violated. So there are a lot of features on the platform that you can be able to uh, access and use so that you get your rights uh, remedied in the event that they are violated. My hope really is to um, work together with grassroots um, um, homegrown activists who work together and make change in their local communities. Because those people who see that this kind of change on a local level works uh, will hopefully follow this kind of wave um, on, on national and regional levels. For our democracy that it's it's very important that we put the citizens' voice into the heart of the debate. We need the citizens to build our democracy and to strengthen our democracy. Our democracies are in danger, and I think that if we put more participatory democracy in our representative democracy, uh, we will uh, uh, win uh, everything. That would be a win-win for everybody. The suburbs are the areas where the failure and the distress, uh, you know, is uh, really something that concerns those areas. I mean, democracy and legality are not any more values you know, for, for young people. Today's debates and initiatives have also focused on crucial topics such as reducing inequalities and political polarization and fighting corruption all of which can help restore faith in democracy. It's proof that the World Forum for Democracy is not just a place for ideas, but solutions. Technology is one of the most powerful tools that young people will use to create their own democratic future. But which route should they take? And which story should they believe in? Everybody has a story, and everybody is entitled to tell their story. Within democracy, you have to listen and um, to either tell stories or receive stories, there is 
nest the need to listen, to hear what the other person or the other group are saying. The second day of the forum is always a great opportunity to mingle and exchange views, and of course to enjoy the irreverent cartoonist in residence or listen to some music. There is this old stupid saying that goes that the eyes of a person do not lie, and never has this been so clear to me as this year. The war has burned itself into the eyes of these people. Those with the glassy eyes come from Kiev. The answer to one question about what an updated democracy might look like was found in an old doctrine. Most people believe that decisions have to be based on a binary question, yes or no, for or against, are you Protestant or Catholic? Are you Hutu or Tutsi? Are you Sunni or Shia? All these stupid questions, crowd on say, because you might be something else. Uh, and there are multi-option ways of decision-making which have been on the planet for quite some time. I'm optimistic in the long term because there are computers on this planet. All we have to do is to bring the computer into the debating chamber and, and to have multi-option voting, preferential voting in those congresses. So it's, it's a long process, uh, one that hopefully will lead to policymakers uh, understanding, having a better understanding of what young people want and taking that into account and for us to basically further our work agenda over the coming years with this as underpinning our work. Another inspiring day here at the World Forum for Democracy, full of powerful insights and ideas for a better future. A day which, as always, ended on a convivial note. So